I really liked what you were saying about um, after I went to ONA and EIJ. First of all, thank you all for being here. Um, I think it's great that Hari could uh, take some time to um, just bring the perspective of, you know, one of the media capitals of our country over in D.C. Um, and often it seems like a lot goes on in the East Coast, so it's really cool when people are able to come out here to our corner and, uh, and talk to us about what's happening in media. Are there ways that stories can be written or produced or filmed that lend that story to that engagement, that, that open it up more when it's first thrown out? You know, I, I wonder if, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the Johnny Cash Project. It was a Chrome example. It's really fascinating. It's, it's this, um, if you get a chance, I think it's probably johnnycashproject.com or something. But uh, they, they made a music video um, based on an artist's renditions. And it was kind of like a time-lapse drawing. And underneath every single frame of that drawing were the audience's interpretations. And so they would color and they would make these things happen. And then as those things were voted up, you would see the whole, I mean, it was just, it's kind of mind-numbing when you think about how many <clears throat> hundreds of thousands of people not just viewed it, but decided to like totally engage in a part of it. Now, one, I, I understand that that's art and that's music and maybe people wouldn't um, necessarily have the same reaction to a news product, but then I think, well, why wouldn't they? It, it might actually be more impactful and more important for them to put their opinion in and their, share their experience with something, especially if it's, a, you know, you're saying, here's a big national issue, and all of a sudden, along, uh, along that story, are we going to see sort of video vertical lines where you can kind of scroll down and see someone's interpretation of that particular piece of the puzzle? You know, say, well, I, I am like, you know, Sally, uh, who's selling seashells, I actually I have a small business, and I'm doing this on this particular beach. And I'm, you know, what if that 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 idea that I've only found one character, and if you're one of those characters that resemble this story, what if you could literally put your own two bits in there? And so now that that one story is just kind of a a placeholder, a template, a little foundation, and all these other characters could actually engage into the story with you so that the finished product that somebody sees is constantly evolving online. So the moment that I distributed it, well, that's fine. That's the story that it was at 6 p.m. tonight. But tomorrow morning, it could actually be layered in a whole different way. Do you think we're going to see more of this sort of maybe, I guess, citizen-generated or even sort of semi-professionally generated video content that our students in this program might be learning how to produce on television? Uh, on TV news? I think uh, in the commercial space what's interesting to me is that right now the, most of the the networks are um, really just exploiting uh, people by asking for them to send in an eye report mm -hmm. because they're not getting paid for it and I feel like that's one of the big problems that we have in trying to change this idea that news should be of value to you but I'm basically asking you to work for me for free mm -hmm. and what am I gonna do give you a YouTube credit as it flashes by oh, it's this one, this house slamming into this bridge was shot by producer Matthew. And I remember that because I was looking for it. Most people, they just remember the house smashing into the bridge. I hope he gets paid. I don't know. But mm. like right now on iPads in iMovie, there's a little button that actually lets you publish directly to CNN for free. And mm. if you look at maybe um, the model that Hit Record is following, um, they're trying to essentially say, hey, we're going to try to sh open source an entire movie together. And if you shoot a frame of this film, if you shoot a scene of this film, if you contribute X, Y, or Z, we're going to try and make this huge open uh, spreadsheet, and you will participate in the, the value gained from whatever happens to the film in the future. I mean, we have the, the, the accounting technology today to make that happen. So I think that there are going to be enough waves of people who are just so tickled that they have a video from their phone that they can press a button and give to someone and say, golly, that was on TV. That's not going to stop. And perhaps the commercial folks are going to prey on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think over time, what you're also going to see is someone's going to get kind of smart and say, wow, you know, my video has been everywhere six times around the globe, and I didn't make a dime off mm -hmm. it. But the person who technically came here and shot it as a professional, uh, or was just smart enough to be a freelancer and sell it, hmm, you know, so that hmm moment will happen faster as they all are, are starting to get on social networks and the information exchange will happen and there will be sort of less friction there. 
what is the responsibility of the journalist when it comes to synthesizing a story that is basically already being told in a lot of ways through a lot of voices? How can you hope to sum that up? What do you, what do you look for? I think you want to ultimately, um, whether people like it or not, you, you want to be a first line filter. Right? So as, as, the, as the amount of channels increase, whether it's cable TV or internet space, that means for me, that's just that's the amount of noise that's increased. So the, the filter becomes actually someone I trust even more. Um, so if there are lots of issues on global health and women, et cetera, et cetera, that are happening every day, guess what, Nick Kristof punched through to me somehow, right? So I just say, well, this filter, this is what he thinks is most important at the moment, and he surveys the space. So if I am a person who's trying to tell a story that's telling itself with thousands of people, wh where's the value that I'm providing? So I might have to put in the X number of hours to say, in the five hours that I spent scanning this, here's my best of, here's my 15 top five, Please tell me more if you find other stuff that's even more compelling or similar to this or something, something. Help me do this job and help me kind of, I guess the word is kind of played out in the last year and a half of curating, but really helping me understand something is, so even if that reporter is not in 15 places, the New York Times did a great job of, I mean, kind of physically putting it on a map mm -hmm. and, 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 and giving me a framework to understand this because otherwise you have a list of 426 videos submitted but their organization of those facts and those vignettes was what the real value was. And I, I hate to call it a new role because in a way it, I think what it is is something we should have been doing all along but I hear um, I actually think of back in my sixth seventh grade math class where our <coughs> math teacher would say show your work because if you show your work I'm gonna give you partial credit. And she would have tests with like three questions, so you better show your work, because if you get any of those wrong. And that does seem to be a, you know, yeah. a, a mainstay of journalism these days, is show your work. Yeah. So that people don't, you know, they, they can follow along, they can also replicate a bit of that scientific totally. method. Um, t tell us how that manifests itself in, in your work and the, you the, know, the I, work uh, you see. I'd say a guy that I read fairly often um, is Alex Howard at O'Reilly Media. Mm. He goes by at Digifile. That's great. And he's really just, he's a very good, um, you can call him a curator, whatever, but his links are kind of well positioned. But I would, I, it tech, the, the, what I like about his work, and I've said this to him too, is that if I read his story as a story without having to uh, see any line of blue, it would make sense. But what he added was reasons for me to keep coming back to his story, because I'll link through, I'll go back, and then I'll come back to this story. And, and over time, his article on X becomes like an authoritative bookmark in my head. Mm -hmm. And I said, this guy's already done all this work for me. And now I, he saved me time, and I trust him more and more. And so regardless of whether he's talking about Gov 2.0 or some other issues, I've started to say, I, I, I like this guy, right? Whereas on the other hand, like you have Andy Carvin, who's doing something mm. completely different, and it's a totally different shift for what is journalism today. And he, he's live verifying and crowd or something. I don't even know what the word is that he's doing. It's mm -hmm. fabulous to watch. Now, I mean... Do you all know, by the way, who Andy Carvey Carvin Sorry, is? Andy Carvin's a national public radio social media strategist, and he, if you follow at A. Carvin, be ready for a lot of tweets. I mean, he single-handedly has basically been covering the entire Arab Spring, every country, and he has enough followers in the region, started out with his own personal networks of who he knew, and then he was started to watch the connections between other people following certain hashtags, and then he'd say, wow, what a coincidence, this person seems to tweet when this person's asleep, and maybe their brother and sister, da 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 He's put all this in his head, and then while he forwards and retweets, he's constantly asking you, verified, question mark, can anyone confirm, question mark, and within, what's magical is within 20 minutes or 30 minutes, they're saying, no, I think that picture from Iran is actually doctored because here's the photograph of it from the newspaper mm -hmm. that I'm holding in my hand today, mm -hmm. and that noose isn't there. Whoa! I mean, how long would it have taken us to mm -hmm. figure that out? And so, but he's just an exception. I don't think that I could ever mm. do that. I don't, maybe I could, but I, Ah, it's just, you know, it's just, <laughs> that's so true. There's still a controversy about that. I mean, Andy's just this example of someone who's exploded 
verification. And, and it is, it's amazing. I mean, he has a huge network. I don't know how many followers. We're talking 50, 60,000. <coughs> and he'll put out something that's essentially, you know, it's unverified. But he'll just say yeah. question, and he source question. That's kind of his mainstay. Yeah. So it's a really interesting debate about, we see the effects of it in his case, right. is that stories get told faster and better and help people, we hope, in a yeah. region that's in a lot of trouble. Now, and, and then and the, and the other question that happens is, is that, well, when I look at quote unquote media or a storyteller, I hope that you've done that much work for me, right? So, uh, so that's, the, that's, that's the other the half of it is, Andy, I don't follow everything you say because half of what you say you're still looking for verification on and that takes me time. Now, given you're beating the Associated Press by 20 minutes or more, but in the grand scheme of things, I sometimes am a big fan of like the slow news movement. You know, which is the news hour. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but really, just slow it down for a second, can you? I mean, uh, by the end of the day, you've already got all that information. And, you know, what was fascinating is when Steve, so I was in, in the Bay Area when Steve Jobs passed. And so KQED, the reporters at KQED, where I was talking to some of them the next day, and they said, what's really interesting, Hari, is that at 4.30, we were having conversations at 440 or whatever, we were having conversations, we were like, well, how do we advance the story at 530? Because everyone will already have known. And I'm like, really? That's a totally big shift. Now, again, KQED, San Francisco, tech market, word about Apple will spread. But I was like, this is an obit for a person. I really hope you have something in the can. Because it wasn't a shock. You know, it was very sad and it was happening for a while. So I hope you kind of, Take, take a second to like go ahead and allow your three minute obit to happen versus like don't, don't break in news on me just for the sake of why? Who's going to win? I mean, do I remember which institution? I don't actually. I mean, I noticed that 85% of everybody that I was following on Twitter was commenting on Steve Jobs. And that was also an indication to me that, because I don't follow just nerds. I mean, there were people in Libya that were awakened by this and they were tweeting this and I was like, Wow, mm -hmm. you know, this is, for some people, it's their John Lennon moment. Mm -hmm. You know, I, where were you? And, oh, I knew this person. He's changed my life, et cetera, et cetera. For other people, it was much less. But I, I don't, I think that in those kind of situations, it's okay. You know, like, do what you're good at. Don't try to compete with breaking news or CNN or the AP wire services because you're not going to win and you're going to look dumb doing it. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just figure out what your niche is, what your audience likes about you, and if you have a personal story about Steve Jobs and somebody that you, know, that you, you knew and can actually comment intelligently, then that's what, it's okay. I mean, if, if you don't really want to try for that person in the audience who's going to switch away and throw your brand away because you didn't have that information first. Really, because that person's going to run off from the second. I mean, it's like a, mm -hmm. they're a cheater. You know, just they're going to cheat on their wives and husbands. <laughs> they're going to oh cheat dear. on you. So. <laughs> Thank you to Hari. Uh, thanks, thanks for to having me. You guys for coming and KCTS and MCDM and everybody who put this together.